welcome. Get 20% off using the code 2LIVE. This basketball is fully endorsed by former NBA player Cedric Sabalos. It is also used in the UBA, India's version of the NBA, and the Mexican Federation Basketball Association. Not to mention, has a 100% back guarantee. If it does not improve your shot, if it does not improve your percentage, you get your money back. No questions asked, including the shipping charges. Get the basketball today at evo1sports.com. Use the code 2LIVE. And we are back in the BS3 Sports Show. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We'll have Jonathan J. Bates calling in here in just a moment. Here's a did you know moment of the show. Gary Payton and Gary Payton II are the first pair, father-son pair, to play for the Lakers. I'm not a Lakers fan, but I thought that was an interesting stat that I heard from this week. Um, if you guys don't remember, Gary Payton played for the Lakers later on um, in his career uh, when he was... <laughs> When he was chip hunting, that's what he was doing. He, he was he was trying to get that ring. Uh, he ended up getting it with, I believe he got it with Miami. Uh, but he was chip hunting. And it looks like he did get the ring with, with, with Miami. But him and his son have both played for the Lakers, which is a first time ever in the Lakers franchise history. So I thought that was pretty cool. So, also, from this week, uh, before we have our caller back on the line, like I mentioned earlier, if you didn't hear the story, Kendrick Lamar now has a sports division uh, for Top Dog Entertainment. And he signed his first athlete, which is amazing. You know, him starting to get involved in other things, other than just rap, I mean, that's building, that's starting to build a legacy. That That's starting to build something, not just for you, but for your family and for your future. So, man, shout out to Kendrick Lamar. Also, we got the Grammys coming up. I know he's going to be nominated for his album. Also, uh, Cardi B, I'm sure he's going to be nominated. So, with, with the Cavs drama, so we should have Jonathan calling in here in just a moment. But with the Cavs drama, it's unnecessary drama. Every single year, there's, there's, we don't know if we have enough players. Maybe we should trade for someone. Shut up, okay? You got your best friend in D-Way there. You got Tristan Thompson. You have Kevin Love. Uh, you got Isaiah Thomas. Now you're trying to trade for George Hill. You're trying to trade for DeAndre Jordan. Uh, you're trying to trade for uh, Nerlens Noel and Wesley Matthews, which me being a Mavs fan, you can take both of them because we're going through a rebuild anyway. But every single year, there seems to be some type of wine. There seems to be a violin being played. <laughs> a violin being played by LeBron and the Cavaliers. Now, I don't think, and here's the thing, though. I don't think they're good enough to beat the Warriors anyway. But I don't see any player that they can add onto that team to just get miraculously better. And Andre Balboa says, Cavs getting beat down right now by the Thunder. And Mocha Bella says, that's why I can't stand them Cavaliers. LeBron whines too much. He does. Uh, he whines when it comes to fouls. And he whines when it comes to adding more additional players to his team. But with this, do are they going to make a trade? Yes. I strongly believe that they're going to make a trade. Who is it going to be? That That's probably the million dollar question. Who are they going to try to trade for? Which I don't know. But I could see, I could see the New Orleans Noel and Wesley Matthews trade going down. 
they, the Cavs are saying, or people are saying that they need a shooter. Okay, I'm, I'm going to lean in real close right now when I say this. What are you doing with Cal Corver? I thought that's what his complete job was. Catch and shoot. Isn't that what his job is? Catch and shoot the ball. And they're trying to trade for somebody else. They're trying to trade for Wesley Matthews, which is a 3 and D type of guy. I get it. Headlining news by Tar Heels 1, 80-66 over the Yellow Jackets. Luke May is put, put up 17 and 11. Luke May is becoming that dude right now. Luke May is becoming that dude. Um, Andre says Cavs need a 3 and D guy. So I, that's what I'm saying. I think this Wesley Matthews deal can probably go down. But it just seems like I think every single year there's something that we that we're talking about with the Cavaliers. There's something every year. Now Kyrie's gone, so you can't whine about Kyrie anymore. Kyrie's no longer there, so you can't put any blame on him. Um, Isaiah Thomas is there, which I think. As he starts to get into the groove, I think he's going to be a great addition. The only thing I can say, though, is that he's not that great on defense, number one. And number two, if you put a huge body on him, if you have Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins down there, he's going to get clubbed. And I think that's a part of the problem. IT was a great pickup. It was a great trade. But when he's going to the hole, he, he, he's going to get abused. And Andre says, uh, May looking like Psycho T. Yes, he is. Which I didn't know that was in him. I didn't know that was in Luke May. I'm going to be honest. I, I followed the Tar Heels very closely. And I did not think Luke May had that type of skill at all. Also, uh, Mocha Bella says, so every player has to go to the Cavaliers to satisfy the king. Exactly. Bow down to the king. Boston better than Cleveland, says Vince. I agree. And this is without Gordon Hayward. Imagine that. This is without Gordon Hayward and they're, I do believe they're better than Cleveland. Kyrie is a better all-around point guard than IT. Jason Tatum, who is a great young player. Uh, Jalen Brown. You got your, your D guy. And Marcus Smart. They are going to trade for somebody at the deadline, too. So be on the lookout. You could see DeAndre Jordan there. You could see... Who else is out there? You could see somebody. Somebody's going to get traded to Boston. I don't know who it is. Andre uh, says Boston better than next year. They will be. A big L says Kyrie saved the Cavs that year that they won it. And the refs <laughs> saved, <us. laughs> saved the Cavs too. Yeah, Kyrie was was the knight in shining armor with that team. Because if he didn't get hit that three, if he didn't hit that three, it probably would have been over with if he didn't hit that three. So, all right, that's enough Cavs talk. I don't know what happened with with uh, Jonathan J. Bates. I thought he was going to be calling in. Maybe he'll call in. But the Kawhi Leonard injury. We got to talk about this. How is this going to either hurt or could it possibly help San Antonio? And yes, Vince, your Timberwolves are on the way too. They are. <laughs> <laughs> I can always count on Vince to put the Timberwolves in the mix, which they are. Jimmy Butler, Cat, um, who else they have? I believe Jeff Teague. I mean, th th this is a good team. Taj Gibson. They, they, this is a good team. So they are on the up and up. I completely agree with you on that. So also, uh, like I was talking about. The Kawhi Leonard situation. 
is that gonna help or hurt them? Because Kawhi honestly hasn't been playing that much anyway. So looks like Pop has still got these guys into a groove. But here's the standings though in the conference. They're still number three. They're still number three, and they don't have Kawhi. Now, you go through the rest of the season, he's out indefinitely. Does he miss the whole season? That could completely change everything right there. If he misses the whole season, I do see him making the playoffs. I I do see him making a top eighth spot. But getting anywhere past probably the second round, I just don't see it happening. But this Kawhi injury, to me, is huge. Pop is a great coach. Don't get me wrong. Pop doesn't have any problem with with plugging in whoever, putting in whoever. He's good at that. But if you remember, the last time he lost Kawhi, it almost seemed like he went crazy. You've seen a different side of Pop that you've never seen before. He, they looked like they gave up. When they lost Kawhi, it looked like they gave up. That That's my opinion. It, it looked like they just began to not play the type of basketball that the Spurs should play. So, of course, LaMarcus Aldridge, uh, Paul Gasol, Rudy Gay, Ginobili, the grandfather. Ginobili's the only person on the team now at 40. He's putting up points off the bench. Tony Parker's still there. So, you you can't count him out, but if Kawhi is hurt for the rest of the year, he's out for the rest of the year, the season's over with. Because there's no way they're going to beat the Warriors. There's no way that they're going to beat... I don't even think they'll beat the Rockets. Which, imagine this. LeBron's a free agent. Does he get on the banana boat and you have Harden, CP3, and LeBron? Only person left on the banana boat would, of course, be D-Wade. And D-Wade goes pretty much anywhere his wubby suggests he should go. So that would be a shoe-in. So that leads me to this other topic. Do you guys see LeBron leaving? Do you guys see LeBron staying in Cleveland or leaving to go to Houston, leaving to go to the West Coast? Andre, um, I'm sorry, but he's probably not going to go to the Clippers. But he may still be in L.A. But would you stab your team in the back? Would you stab your city and your team in the back twice? I don't know. Would you stab them in the back? Which I don't... don't, It's hard for me to believe that he would do that. It's hard. But this is LeBron James we're talking about. He can do whatever. King James. But I think Kawhi's injury is definitely going to hurt San Antonio. How much is it going to hurt them? I don't know. I think through the regular season, it probably is going to help them because Pop is going to be able to switch and move and you know figure out what he's going to do. So the NBA tension in the fights, it just seems like this these past couple of weeks it has been fight after fight you got Kyrie I'm sorry you got Kyle Lowry and Ben Simmons going at each other saying meet me in the in the meet me in the tunnel I mean like we need to have NBA fight night <laughs> we need to have an NBA fight night have these guys put some gloves on like you was growing up put some gloves on go outside and fight but I love the competition though I think the NBA needs it I think the NBA needs the competition and I think it it definitely 